Hey everybody, if you have a Soundcraft UI24 and you've been wondering how to connect it to Reaper so that you can multi-track, I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Let's go! Okay, before we actually get started, I want to say this. The way that the Soundcraft UI24 handles its USB sends from the mixer to your computer is a little bit different than how other mixers in this price bracket do things. So if you're not super comfortable with how these things work, or if you're not super familiar with audio sort of in general, I'm going to suggest you watch our other video where we go in depth on what the USB sends are, what they're set aside for, and how to use it in conjunction with your DAW. Once you watch that video, come on back and check out this video. It'll probably make a lot more sense as we go through it. If you're choosing to move ahead anyway, or if you've just come back from watching the other video, I'll say that I'm not going to go super in depth on how the mixer is set up the way I did in the suggested video. I'm just gonna do the basics you need to get it working with your DAW. And then of course, I'm gonna talk about getting your DAW set up to send and receive signal. So now let's jump right into the mixer. The first thing we need to do is tell the mixer where to look for any information that's coming back from your DAW into your mixer. So there's a couple of ways you can do that. You can click on each individual channel in your mixer window, go up to the edit button, click on the patching tab, and then click on the USB DAW tab. And then you can choose any slot you want. You do not have to put slot one on channel one. You do not have to put slot two on channel two. If you wanna move things further down the line on your channel strips, you can do that. In this case, I'm gonna tell channel strip one to look on slot one. And I'm gonna click down here on channel two and tell it to look under slot two. And now if I go back to this main window, you can see that down at the bottom of channel one and channel two, it says underneath the fader, DAW1 and DAW2. So I know just by looking at it that anything coming out of output one and output two from my software coming back to the mixer, those are gonna show up on these two channel strips. So that's, that's the slow way to do it. The quick way you can do it is to come up and click on the cog, come over to your patching tab, click on USB DAW1 to 16, and then you can actually click through it like this. The other thing you can do is just hit patch one to one. If I hit this button, it will patch all of my channels, one to 16 and 17 to 32 that are coming back from the software onto the channel strips, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way up to 32. So let's click on that just to watch what happens. Do I wanna do it? Okay, yes. And you can see now that the first 16 channels have been patched. And if I click on this button, you can see the remaining channels have been patched. So let's jump back to the mixer. And now you can see, of course, each channel at the bottom is showing that it is getting its signal from the DAW returns. So this is great in getting it set up to receive. What do we have to do to get it to send signal out to our software? We don't actually have to do anything. All of our channels are automatically going out over USB to our software. The thing you have to remember, and it's very important, channel one going out of your mixer is not going to show up at input one on your software. It's actually going to show up at channel 11. So channel one is actually channel 11 in your software, channel two is actually channel 12 in your software, and so on, up the line. The reason for this is that the first 10 channels leaving your mixer on USB are set aside for your main bus and your aux buses. So channel one and two are holding the left and right from your master bus, and then three through 10 are holding the signal from your aux one through aux eight. This means that you can send signal through your main left right mix. If you have a mix going, you want that full mix to be captured in your software as well. You can set a couple of channels in your software to receive on channel one and two, and you'll get anything that's showing up on your master bus. 
And then of course, three through 10, the same thing. Anything you send into your auxes, one through eight, will now show up on channels three through 10 on your software. So when you really think about it, all you're doing is adding 10 to whatever channel you want to pull in on your software. If you have a microphone plugged into the physical channel number one on your mixer, you're going to tell the software to look on channel 11. So you've added 10. And if you plug a microphone or an instrument into the physical input channel two, add 10, that's 12. So you're going to tell your software to look on channel 12 to get anything that's plugged into channel two. And your physical inputs, 1 through 22, they are hard-coded to the numbers that I've just said. So 1 is 11, 2 is 12, 3 is 13, and all the way up the line. Those numbers are what they are, and you cannot change them. Okay, so that's great. We have our head wrapped around that a little bit, I hope. But looking at this mixer window here for the Soundcraft, you're going to see that, okay, we've got all of our input channels here set to be information coming back from our recording software. Well, what if I have a microphone that I want to plug in and use it and send to the software? Well, we need to set up a channel to do that too. So let's take our channel one here and let's change its input to be local one. So I have a microphone plugged in to one. I'm going to bring that microphone over. Check, check, check. You can see there's a little bit of blue signal here. Let's actually click gain. Let's bring this up. And now we've got some more signal. And if I bring this up, we're going to see that we've got green signal, meaning the channel is active. And we're seeing it on our master bus as well, on our main fader for left and right. If I pull this up a little bit more, we're going to hear it show up on the speakers in my room. You can hear it getting louder, hear it getting quieter. So we have signal here coming in from our microphone and the rest of our channels are set to returns from the software. Obviously, if you have more than one microphone or instrument that you want to use and send to your software, you just have to tell more channels where to look. So if I had another two microphones and I wanted them on channel strip two and three, I would click on channel strip two, click edit, local two, then click down here on three, local three. And now if we look, the channel strips have lost their indicator for being DAW. They are now just the regular physical inputs on your mixer. So really quickly, if I take my microphone out of channel one and plug that into channel two, you can now see I've got signal on channel two. Check, 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 check. Let's bring this up just a bit. Can we hear it? Yes, we can. And same thing if we take it out of two and plug it into three and then do the same thing. Let's bring our gain up and bring this up. Check, 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 check. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. There you go. So that's how you set inputs for physical inputs and how you set returns coming from your software. Obviously, the next thing to do is look at our recording software and see how we set that up. Okay, so let's jump into our Mac. The first thing we need to do is look at audio MIDI setup so that we can make sure we're seeing our Soundcraft mixer, and we are. If we weren't seeing it in this window, then I would suggest uh, restarting your computer, checking your USB cable, and if you have another USB cable, change it if the restart of the machine doesn't work. Once we know that we have it in here in Audio MIDI settings, the thing that I like to do is right click on it and assign this device to be my sound input and sound output device. I do this regardless of whether or not I'm multi-tracking. Um, it's just once I've done this, if I use it for daily input and output, Putting those two settings in there makes this device take over those functions. Once we know we're seeing our device, we can close this window. And then the next thing we need to do is open Reaper. So before we actually get started with our session, you need to come up to Options, go down to Settings, and then under Audio Device, we need to choose the Soundcraft UI24 as the device that Reaper is going to use. Once you've selected that, click Apply. 
and then really quickly jump up to the audio tab. Why are we doing this? We're doing this because if you remember, I said the physical input on the front of the mixer starts at channel 11. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna do a quick remapping of the names. See right here, channel naming mapping, input channel name alias and remapping. Select this, click in the edit names and map. So you can see I was in here looking at it already. Typically, this is what you're going to see where it's a typical setup. Input one means it's looking at the hardware input one. Input two means it's looking at the hardware input two. Luckily, in Reaper, you can change this to avoid confusion. So you can leave it this way by all means and just know that when you're bringing a channel from your mixer into Reaper, if it's channel one on the mixer, you actually need to bring it in on 11 on your channel strip. But if you want to avoid confusion, this is what I would do. I would highlight everything, I would remove it, and then add one at a time, double click in it, and you actually want to choose channel 11, and then give it the name input. You can name it either one or input 11, whatever you want to avoid confusion. I'm going to put input 11, that way I'm not getting confused with different naming conventions. And then add, let's do input two. So this is actually input 12, and we'll call this input 12. And we'll just leave it at that for now. Click OK, click Apply, click OK. Now we're ready to actually make a session. So we need tracks, we don't have any. You can come up to track and click Insert New Track, or you can press Command T. And every time you press Command T, you'll get another track. I'm just gonna go with one track to keep this simple. You can see that the input, it shows up as 11. If we wanted to change this to one of our other ones, we would obviously click input, mono, and choose the input that we wanted. So that's great, we have input coming in. The next thing we need to do is set an output. So this section right here is where you do your hardware outputs. You can pick any empty slot, I'm just gonna choose this one. I'm going to click add new hardware output. Now you can see we're showing stereo pairs here, out one and two, out two and three, out three and four. If you wanna use a stereo pair, you can by all means, or you can scroll all the way down and choose your mono outputs. I'm gonna choose output one. Then close this window and you can see out one listed right here. So we remapped and renamed the inputs. Why didn't we do that for the outputs? Well, as we talked about, the outputs are actually one through 32. So we don't have to change it if we don't want to. You can, of course, but you don't need to do it to have a functional session right away. So with our input set at 11 and our output set at one, technically we're ready on the Reaper side to do a recording. Let's pull over our microphone and check. And remember we set channel strip number one on our mixer to actually be physical input number one. So we're getting a signal here, check, 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 hearing it through the speaker. That's ready to go. We're not seeing it in Reaper. Well, let's click record enable, arm the channel, and now we are actually seeing the signal. So let's do a quick record. Let's click anywhere up here in the window. Check, check, one, two, check, one, two. Checking this microphone for recording. Let's check it for playback. Okay, so we have a waveform here, that's good news. If we turn off recording enable and hit playback, are we gonna hear this right now? No, we're not. How come? Well, that's because we don't have a return set in our mixer. We did originally, but we changed everything. So let's quickly jump over here and let's choose a channel. One, two, three are set as the physical inputs. Let's leave those alone for now. Let's look at channel four. Channel four is set to receive from DAW four. So let's change that. We know we're using output number one on Reaper. So let's change this channel in our Soundcraft to look for that channel. Highlight the channel, click on edit, and under USB DAW, we're gonna choose slot one. So now if we hit play again, are we gonna see signal? Yeah, we are. We're seeing it here. And if we raise the fader, check, check, one, two, check, one, two, 
checking this microphone for recording. Let's check it for playback. There we go. We set our input and our output in Reaper. We have an input for our microphone in the Soundcraft, and we set a second channel strip to bring information back from our software. Obviously, you just need to set up more channel strips in Reaper for as many inputs as you want and have them coming in on the correct inputs based on what your mixer's doing, and then send them back out to your mixer on whatever outputs you want. And then, of course, in Soundcraft, you need to set whichever channel strips you want to receive from the DAW channel you're outputting through Reaper. In this case, we're outputting on one, which we brought back on this channel strip, but we could bring it back on any channel strip we want, and we could make this one, this two, this three, this four, or we could slide down the scale and make this channel one return, this channel two return, this channel three return. It's really up to you on how you do it. There you go. Signal from our mixer to our DAW, signal from our DAW, back to our mixer. I know it was a little bit complicated and if you made it all the way here and you're still not really sure what was going on, I'm going to recommend you watch our other video where we go in depth on how the USB sends are handled by this mixer, what those certain sends are set aside for and it'll probably make a lot more sense. Just to let you know I have these same instructions coming for Reaper on PC. That video should be out in a couple of days, so make sure that you are subscribed with notifications turned on so you don't miss that video. Anyway, with all that aside, I hope this video was interesting, entertaining, educational. If it was any of those three things, please like, share, subscribe, and of course you can check us out on Patreon, or you can do a super thanks down below, or even join this channel down below, and that helps us to grow our channel. Anyway, until we see you next time, thanks for watching here on Quick and Easy Quickies. Bye.